What's up everyone? Uh, welcome back to another video. Today's video, I'm going to be going over function calling with OpenAI. I know it's a week late, but I wanted to go over it because I thought it was actually a pretty cool uh, way to go about doing things. So TLDR, um, if you are trying to figure out like what parameters you need to call a preset function that you have, um, and you want to get these parameters from natural language, then OpenAI has two specific models that are trained specifically for taking in uh, function schemas and then outputting the, or and the user query and then outputting the schema for the function keyword arguments. So today I am going to be going over this notebook. Uh, we're just going to get right into it. We're going to pip install langchain openai.n, python.env, and tick token. We're going to load in our openai API key from our environment. And then we're going to create a function description. And this is just straight from the function description that they have in the example here. I just wanted to use something that I knew worked so I could go over, go over it more at the conceptual level. So... Here we have function descriptions and it's an array of uh, JSON objects and we only have one called get current weather. We have a description, a natural language description. We have the parameters. So you will be take, it'll be taking location and unit and you see it tells you the type and the description as well. And then we have our user query. So what's the weather like in, let's say Austin, Texas. And here we're just doing it with plain OpenAI first. So chat completion, create, and we're using the GPT-4.613 model, which is one of the models that they mentioned in the article uh, right here, somewhere here, right there. And now we can see what the AI responds with. And you can see that it responds with the function call with the name get current weather and the arguments right here. And so we can get the user location and user unit by getting that from the response. And since we have our predefined function here, we're going to get the function response. And now we are going to get a second response. And what we're doing is we are we have the AI message that we're passing back into the message history and the function response. So this is kind of like showing LangChain how uh, it's like, oh, the user said, asked a question. Here was my response, the AI response. Here's the function response. So now my final answer should be something where I respond in natural language. And that's what I do right here. The current weather in Austin, Texas is sunny and windy with a temperature of 70, 72 degrees Fahrenheit. And now we're going to go over how to use it with Langchain. Langchain just released this, this uh, function right here called format tool to open AI function. So what we can actually do is here we can instantiate a GPT-4.613 model and we can import tools from Langchain tools. And we can actually convert these into function schemas that the OpenAI GPT-4.613 endpoint takes. So I'm using the movie file tool. We're saying tools equals movie file tool, and then functions equals format tool to OpenAI function. And so we're formatting the only tool we have to a OpenAI function schema. And this is what the output is. And you can see here, it's kind of the same thing we had above, but for the Langchain tool. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to call our LLM with a human message that says move file to foobar. And when we get the message, and we're passing in the functions as well. And so the message keywords are going to be uh, foo and bar. So it knows 
kind of what the like keywords should be and it knows like the source path is foo it's saying move the file foo uh to destination bar and now we'll go through a more complex example so in this we have two function descriptions one is edit financial forecast with these three parameters and we have print financial forecast. So the way this is going to work is we're going to make a user request that says, please do three things. Add 20 units to the 2023 employee account, subtract 10 units from the 2022 items sold, and then print out the forecast at my home. So for our first response, let's see what we get. As you can see for the first response, the additional keywords are a function call to edit financial forecast. So it knows that in the first step, it should be doing edit financial forecast. And it has the arguments of the year 2023 categories, employee account, and the amount is 20. And that's what we said, add 20 to the employee account. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to see what the function name is, and it is still edit financial forecast. And now we're going to get our second response. And what we're doing here is we're going to load up the entire chat history between the chat bot or the chat model and us at this point. So it's going to be the first user request that we had, the AI message and the chat message where it says just update the financial forecast and then we're passing in the function descriptions again so what we're doing here is we're just kind of like priming it up again and saying okay it's already done the first step so for the second response it should be going into the second step and by that i mean we said subtract 10 units from 2022 items sold And as you can see, the response for the keywords here is still edit financial forecast, but the year is 2022, the category is items sold, and the amount is negative 10. So what we're doing here is we're kind of like, we have our functions description, and then we have our context with the steps that we want the model to kind of go through. And what we can do is we can then take the responses from the first step and pass it back into chat history of the model. And we can have it continue and move forward and give us the next set of keywords and arguments for the next function that should be called in the steps that we described in natural language. And as you can see, it's still the edit financial forecast function. And now when we run it a third time, remember we said we're going to pass in everything, all of the chat history from the last two calls. And so the third function is going to be print financial forecast because it knows that it's done the second two steps already, as you can see in the chat history. And if we go for a fourth response, we will see that says, great, I made the changes. So uh, at a high level, I think the best way to go about using function descriptions is if you are in a scenario where you are taking in natural language queries from users and you need them to, or you need to be able to decide which function, if any function should be used. So you could have like a description of all of the functions you have, and maybe you have like, for this would be like a workflow of editing financial forecasts and printing financial forecasts. And you can actually determine what is the next best step to take based on the inputs of the user and then the outputs of the LLMs. And you'll know what functions to call during each step. And then you can pass all of that back into the chat history to continue if you have like a larger a uh, more complex set of steps like we just saw in the second example with editing a financial uh, editing a financial forecast and then printing a financial forecast. Um, but yeah, this is just a quick video on 
functions with OpenAI and also their integration with Langchain, uh, which just came out recently. I think this is a pretty cool uh, kind of way to go about doing things. I don't know if I'll necessarily be doing or using this a ton right now, but it's a good thing to have in the back pocket in case there are some scenarios where it actually would be pretty helpful. Um, and yeah, so if you like the video, uh, drop a comment below, like, hate comments, uh, questions, comments, concerns, and yeah, join the Friday Lunch Discord. There's no outro, so goodbye.